with y'all uh, for a time of worship as we have an opportunity to share uh, with our young people and want to encourage you as we continue to go through this very unusual time together. And on this Mother's Day, not quite the Mother's Day that uh, we had uh, anticipated or thought about, but wanted to include you uh, as uh, a time of worship because you are important to the life of this church. You as young people are important to the life and future, not only of this church family, but of this community and state. So I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, let's open with a word of prayer, and then we'll have a time of worship, and then I'll bring a, a short devotional message. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We ask that you would, Lord, I, I lift up our young people, Lord, our youth, our young adults, Father, those who will be listening or watching, Lord, on YouTube. I ask you, Father God, that you might bless them and grace them this day. Keep them safe. Keep them healthy, Lord. I lift up their families and loved ones, their friends. Lord, I ask that same grace and blessing upon them. Father, I pray that we might be able to worship together this morning and then ask you, Father God, to speak to our hearts through your word. Give your word success in our hearts today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Breath 
message is called the Apex Adversary, and that's found in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, the Apex Adversary. 
You probably have heard just recently about the so-called murder wasp or murder hornets. They're orange and black, and they're big. They have a stinger that's, I think, a half inch long, and it can actually go through protective gear. They've been discovered in Blaine, which is in Washington State. They are Asian giant hornets, and they're known as the largest wasp in the world at two inches long. I would hate to see not just one, I'd hate to see a whole crew of them coming at me. They are predatory. They are somewhat uh, an apex predator in a, a little bit of a sense. They have some um, predators, but not to the point that they are certainly threatened with extinction. Murder wasp or murder hornets. They can kill human beings by lethal stings and venom. In 2013, 42 people died from them in a single Chinese province. Especially when the hives are disturbed, they become quite aggressive. Their venom, if you get stung, and there was a, a guy on YouTube, I, I watched it or saw still pictures, who allowed a, a, a Asian wasp to sting him just to see, record what it would be like. Well, I don't know how smart that was. It didn't look too smart. It didn't look too fun. His arms swelled up. He was in agony for quite a bit. It turned beet red. Why would you want to do that to yourself? But anyway, uh, now you know. But their venom obviously could, and enough in your system, cause anaphylactic shock. That's where you swell up and quit breathing. But here's the more insidious thing that can happen. Their venom can cause kidney damage, and particularly kidney failure. And that's the worst case. So yeah, when you see them, you don't want to just go play with them. They are an invasive species. They produce a colony, a queen. They have drones that can travel 6 to 12 miles in search of food. And one of their favorite food sources, bees. When the giant wasp encounter the hives, they use their large mandibles to bite off the heads of these bees and can devastate and destroy the entire colony in just a short time. Then the giant wasp, they take up occupation of the bee's hive or the bee nest. And that can go on for seven to ten days. And they feed on the pupae and the larvae, that's the young and undeveloped uh, bees that are in the nest. And they feed it to their own young. Now the bees try to sting the, the wasp, but the wasp it doesn't have any effect. They have, uh, they have developed uh, the ability to adapt. They can then create great ecological damage as well as physical damage. This is by Douglas Martin, National Geographic. In a short, they are killers. And you think about, if you have in America honeybees, now in parts of Asia, there are bees that have adapted to this threat who are able to create a bee ball and it gets on top of the wasp or wasp and they can by the, uh, the use of their wings and other vibrations surround that wasp or wasp with enough uh, bees that it begins to he literally heat up the atmosphere inside that hive and they can cook the wasp to death, smother, try it again, suffocate it or smother it uh, with the uh, lack of oxygen. But enough wasp getting into that uh, bee nest, it can eventually overwhelm them. In America, there, American honeybees and other pollination type bees, they don't have that defense. And such, if you're dependent on uh, pollination for if your livelihood, if you have bees or if you have orchards and such that depend on that, and Asian wasps come in, they can do great ecological damage as if we didn't have enough to worry about with uh, coronavirus, now there's the invasion of the murder hornets. Now keep in mind, let's don't overreact on that. It's not a doomsday scenario. Uh, we have African killer bees that are also in America and we're dealing with that as well. But it reminds me of another predator, another apex predator, if you will. The Bible warns you and me of this lethal serial killer he is an apex predator who is constantly hunting and cannot wait to exploit any opportunity to his advantage and to your hurt. 
this hunter, this apex adversary, he is no myth. He is very real. This killer, you guessed it, Lucifer, Satan, the devil, the adversary from of old. Why am I mentioning that to you? A reminder that while we are going through this time, that there are still temptations, that there are still choices that you and I can make that can be not so good, that we still have an adversary. As Christians, as born-again believers, there is still an adversary where God's work is at work. And I promise you, in this time of coronavirus, God is not uh, practicing social distancing. He's not taking some time off. There's no downtime with God. That God is still at work, and He will turn this uh, for our blessing, always for His glory. But don't think for one minute that the devil, your adversary and mine, this church's adversary, is not trying to hinder that work trying to oppose that work, and if he can, to destroy that work, and that is certainly in your life as well. So it's a reminder today, and as we read 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, a reminder there is an adversary. Be sober, that is self-controlled. Be vigilant, that means watchful. Because your adversary walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The word adversary in the language of the New Testament means an opponent. And in that language of the New Testament, it's an opponent that is like a prosecutor that is bringing charges and legal action against a defendant. Legit charges and trumped up charges. And that prosecutor is relentless. And that prosecutor's goal is to destroy the defendant, his testimony, his or her life even, in every way, to secure a conviction that carries a death sentence and thus to inflict multiple untold damage. But we're not talking about a prosecutor in a courtroom like it's law and order. No, my friends, we're talking about that's how the devil comes at you. Satan entices you by your own desires to gratify self. And when you yield to temptation, to sin, he then accuses you and he slanders you and says, Aha, aha. He did it, she did it, there they are. They're guilty. The devil, as a term, is that word diabolus. And the scholars say it means one who is falsely and unjustly accusing you, who maligns you, who trashes you savagely. It's not enough to just bring charges that are legit against you guys, girls. He also lies. He also trashes your reputation and he trashes your life in every way he can. Satan wants to ruin you and any potential work that you have in the Lord. And when he's done, he wants to kill you dead. No remorse. If you are a Christian, you are his target. No exception. He's also like a thief. You know, you think about the Bible tells us about uh, a thief. And the thief comes at a time when you least expect when your guard is down, when you're not thinking, you know, if you're prepared. If I knew that somebody was going to break into my house tonight, and I knew it was going to come at a certain time or in a time frame, then I will be prepared. And we will have, you might say, a come to Jesus meeting at that point when they get there. But if I don't know when the thief is coming, I may think, oh, well, that's just somebody trying to scare me. It ain't going to happen. And guess what? My guard is down. The thief comes in, maybe through an unlocked door, maybe through a, a, a window. Maybe I, maybe I just open the door because it's, it's somebody I thought I knew, and they, they come on in either way. The Bible says in John 10, 10, A thief comes only to steal, kill, and to destroy. I, that is Jesus, have come so that they may have life and have it in abundance. This predatory thief, this killer, if you and I allow him, he would, by stealth, come in to steal. And what are some things he could steal? Is he going to steal your, is, is he gonna steal your, your favorite uh, prize collection of whatever it is you have? Is he going to come in and try to steal my collector comic books that I have? Is he going to try to come in and take out my uh, office that has a, a lot of my library, my own personal library that I use and that, that I enjoy? No, not necessarily, but he may come in and steal our joy. He may certainly try to come in and steal our peace, certainly try to come in and steal our blessings. That's his nature. That's what a thief does. And he wants to slaughter and kill 
any and all opportunity and any and all progress and any and all prospect that you have and that I have and that our church family has. And if he can, he will even try to claim your life physically. That's what predators do. I'm sure you've all seen the Jurassic Park movies, Jurassic uh, World and the Jurassic World Lost Kingdom, or the more recent ones that come out. One of my favorite scenes is when one of the main heroes has raised from birth, I guess, these baby raptors that are now full-scale velociraptors. These are carnivorous lizards that will rip you to shreds, and he's petting them as if they are a pet. But he never, ever, ever takes his eyes off of them or lowers his guard because their nature is, although they might have known him and imprinted on him from birth, their nature is that of a predator. Predators kill. They hunt. And that's what Satan does. And we cannot ever let our guard down. He desires to completely cut off and to fully destroy permanently any and all work of God in your life and through your life. Yep, this one's a killer. And he's eyeing you. And he's eyeing me. He is an apex adversary. Don't think that you can outsmart this murderer. You and I, this church, we are involved in spiritual warfare even when we don't realize it. Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemings of the devil. As I shared in an earlier sermon, that Satan does not always come at you wearing the black robes and chanting some type of Latin for some type of uh, occult worship. Now, there are those who do that, but Satan doesn't always come at you that way. And he does not always come at you, uh, people. He does not always come at us wearing the red suit with a pitchfork with a long tail. He, he doesn't do that. He comes to us in ways that are pleasant, that are appealing, that are logical, that make sense. We're able to rationalize, and if you can rationalize anything, you will justify everything. And he comes at you and plays a mind game. He is a predatory chess player. I guess playing games with the devil is what a lot of people do. Never, ever play games with the devil. He is the master strategist. And those mind games, he knows where you're weak. He knows how to come at you. He knows how to come against you. He knows how to appeal to your intellect. He knows how to appeal to your emotion. He lures you in into a trap. And only his game is no game. Your life your spirit, all that is at stake. He doesn't always come at you wearing the Baphomet, that's the goat head emblems. But he can. And his minions, and I'm not talking about the little yellow guys running around on the, on the Despicable Me movies. I'm talking about those who would be used of the devil. They can appear beautiful and appropriate and harmless, but it's camouflage intended to kill. A lot of predatory apex species in the wild use camouflage in order to either not just hide from a predator, but many of them use camouflage so that they can stalk their prey. His methods involve lies, distortion of truth, misrepresentation, misdirection, and it's all couched in pride. Yep, he's the one to watch. All right. A reminder, you and I, we have an adversary. Now, I don't want us to go around saying, oh, well, uh, I'm scared of the devil. We don't have to live in fear of him because Jesus Christ has overcome him. Nor do I want you to go around saying, you know, I messed up. The devil made me do it. No, let's don't give him any more credit than he deserves. You and I can be our own worst enemy, okay? When I act prideful, then I am acting like the devil. When you act prideful, you're acting like the devil. So yeah, let us be careful that we're not giving the, uh, him any uh, credit uh, and certainly anything that he deserves like that. Uh, the devil cannot make you do anything. He can tempt you. He can make it look good. I love chocolate. Hershey's with almond, okay? I preached a sermon one time about you know uh, avoiding temptation and, and the cost of temptation, and I used the Hershey chocolate with almond. And one of my church members from another place came in, and I didn't see him do it, but on my pulpit was a Hershey, big, big Hershey bar with almond. I thought, this is a test. They want to see if I'm going to practice what I preach. And so I left it up there for about right at a week. I think I, I want to say I made it to that Wednesday night. Yeah, that's about right. Maybe to the next Sunday. But I really wanted that Hershey with almond. And I rationalized. You know, well, 
but, you know, they bought it for me to eat. I think I made my point. I've waited enough days, so guess what? I unwrapped it, and I show enjoyed myself. It wasn't healthy, but I show enjoyed it. And then I was telling the people, I said, yeah, you know, that sermon about temptation, I'm going to have to go back and re-preach that, that, yeah, uh, thank you, whoever put the Hershey bar up there for me, that, that did not help me resist temptation on chocolate. Well, that church member said, well, preacher, we've gone out of town, and we know you like chocolate. We were in Hershey, Pennsylvania. We just got it for you to have fun. So not everything comes at you uh, is always spiritual warfare, but when it comes to the devil, he can make it look so good. And we live in a time where temptation does not always seem like temptation. Oh, it's not so terrible. Come on, you know you want to. It's like if you've ever watched The Emperor's New Groove, a Disney movie I've watched a lot of times, just leave it at that, other than to say that the one of the main characters um, has the little shoulder angel saying, now, now, you know, let's, uh, let's you know, do the right thing. On the other side, there's that little shoulder devil. Hey, you follow me? I'll take you down the path that rocks. Well, and a Kronk, who's the guy having the discussion with himself, is trying to choose which of the two. I think he makes the wrong choice. Just a reminder for all of us, we face those choices every day. We have an apex predator who's stalking us. But, number two, as we close... There is an answer. We do not have to live in fear of this killer, just like you don't have to live in dread and fear of the murder hornet. We're not to seek to engage him. I've, I've, I've read and seen where some people, I think foolishly, uh, you know, t uh, say, well, we're just going to take on the devil. We're going to be devil stomping. Well, first of all, you don't have that power. Jesus does. If there's any stomping to be done, it's done in Jesus Christ who is the fulfillment of Genesis 3.15, that of the seed of the woman would come one who would crush the head of the serpent, stomp it flat, although the serpent would strike his heel. You and I are called to resist him, and we're to resist him firmly, and we're to resist him faithfully, and it is possible to do so anytime Scripture tells us to do something. That means it is possible for us to do so. In the language of the New Testament, we are to forcefully take our stand against him which means we got to be prayed up, which means we got to be in the Word and we need to be taking it seriously. We can only stand up if we have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. If you do not know Him, now is the time. If you do know Him, then let's get involved in that relationship. Don't just take it as, hey, I made heaven and I miss hell. There's so much more to a relationship with Jesus Christ, either when times are good or when times are uncertain. There is so much more in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Faith and God's word because of the sacrifice of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus, they are effective weapons. The, the blood of Jesus and the name of Jesus are effective weapons against this adversary. His truth that cuts deep. His truth that cuts coming and going as that two-edged sword against Satan's lies and schemes. In resisting the devil, we are in James chapter 4, verse 7. We're to draw near to God. And as you draw near to Him, young people, young adults, all who may be watching and listening, as you draw near to God and you do so honestly and, gen and genuinely and sincerely, as the Holy Spirit leads you, I promise you, God draws near to you. Satan has to flee. We stand. Our standing firm is predicated on the fact that we must understand and be alert to temptation that's out there. And we need to be fleeing from temptation. Don't see how close to the edge you can come. It's like if you're chasing a tornado. If you know what you're doing, you might can get into the bear cage. You can kind of get into that punch the core. But if you don't know what you're doing, I would recommend let's don't chase the tornado. Let's don't even try to... Uh, get into the storm, let alone punch the core and get in the bear cage. Those of you who like storm chasing, you know what I'm talking about. Rather, if you see a tornado coming, it's a tornado storm, best thing to do is either A, take shelter, or get out of the way. When temptation comes, don't see how close to the edge you get. Run, flee from it as far as you can. Retreat to God's word in prayer. Let him be that strong tower and refuge. Retreat to God in prayer. Been there, done that. When I've had times of testing or temptation and I feel overwhelmed, oh God, oh God, be a shelter for me. Oh God, please help me. I feel whelmed. And guess what? He does. But it's a choice that is involved. 
wise choices, make wise choices. While it is a fierce foe and a fierce fight, it is a winnable fight. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 15, 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no temptation that you will ever face in whatever category. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, or the pride of life. Lust means strong desire, not just the sensual or immoral aspects. That's part of it. But that strong desire, many of which the desires themselves may be good and normal, but you, you and I want to fulfill them in the wrong way. There is no temptation that comes into your life but that Jesus Christ hasn't been there, done that, overcame it, and gives you the victory. Romans 8.37, you and I, it says, We are more than conquerors through him who loved us. So let's apply this as we wrap this up. Young people, make certain of your relationship with Jesus Christ and your, your commitment to him. You have an apex predator, a killer stalking you, but in Christ, Satan is already a defeated foe. He's doomed. Read the book of Revelation, chapter 20. It is quite evident. Chapter 19 and 20. It's very evident. He knows when he tries to remind you of your past, anything that you've done that's been heinous or horrific, remind him of his future. But you cannot go it alone. You have to go in Christ. Young people, young adults, choose now, before the times of temptation, before the times of spiritual warfare come, that you are not going to be Satan's victim, but you're going to be the Savior's victor. Be in prayer, be in Bible often, to be able to spot the lies offered to you that would trip you, trap you, and trick you. Andrew Womack has said the best defense against the devil is to be so God-centered that we give no place to Satan. Are you God-centered today? Will you be God-centered today? One of my favorite preachers from a long time ago, and I'll, I'll close with this quote. Young people, you must pray. For your passions are strong and your wisdom is limited. Charles Spurgeon. Our invitation is this. If you know Christ, ask Him to help you. Ask Him to help you to be able to be alert and aware of the apex adversary who is not an apex predator any longer because Satan is a defeated foe. Because you have an absolute Savior, but you need to be aware. Ask Him to help you to be mindful and aware of those temptations, those things that would draw you away from the Lord. But if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then I would ask you, I would beg with you this, this morning to put your trust and faith in Him so that the apex adversary has no power over you whatsoever. You may say a prayer like this, Jesus, I'm lost. I don't want to die and go to hell. I don't want to be a victim. I want to be a victor. You died for me. You rose again. I trust you. I believe you. If that's your prayer, then I ask you, let me, let somebody know at this church so that we can encourage you and encourage your family and lead you to follow through in believer's baptism. But that is your invitation this morning. And I just wanted to share that with you. And I want to say happy Mother's Day to, to you and to your families and to always remind you that at Chunky Baptist Church, you are important and you are loved. Let's bow for a word of prayer and we are dismissed. Gracious Father God, we thank you that you have given us the, the heads up that we have an adversary. But Lord, thank you for the armor that you give us in Jesus Christ to stand against him and the victory that is also in Jesus Christ. So help us to be aware to his attacks. And Lord, help us to flee from temptation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. By his grace, go with God.